Hello everyone, and welcome back to another installment of Great Games. Today, we will be looking at Lucas Pope's 2018 masterpiece, The Return of the Oberdin is a very unique game in today's modern landscape. Instead of a large AAA title or a fun online multiplayer game like Fall Guys or Among Us, The Return of the Oberdin is a completely solo game. In fact, there's only one other living character in the whole game, and you barely interact with him anyways. Still, this game is regarded highly, not just by me, but by critics and other gamers as well. This begs the question, why is this game so good? How does this one-bit project developed by one person, with so few things to do, make the most entertaining and intriguing game I've played to date? Well, this answer can be boiled down to two factors, the gameplay and the story. First, the story. In 1807, the Oberdin, an East India trading ship, has washed back up in English waters after having been declared lost at sea in 1803. You play as an insurance inspector, tasked with finding out what happened to the ship's 51 crew and 9 passengers, all now gone from the ship. From here, you slowly piece together the main story using the game's clever key feature, the pocket watch. The watch, emblazoned with memento mortem, Latin for remember death, is not actually a tool to tell the time of day. No, in this game, the pocket watch is used to do this. <laughs> Open the door! Kick it in. Ah! Lest we break it down and take more than those shells! You may take exactly what I give you! This is where the real story begins. Going around from body to body, replaying the last moments of their lives in these short cutscenes, it's a truly fantastic way of storytelling that allows the player to become enveloped and involved with the story, while still making you feel like a detective, by only showing you a few lines of dialogue in one scene, giving the task of filling in the gaps to you. This leads me into the gameplay. Oberdin, at its core, is a detective game, but in contrast to others in the same genre, the gameplay loop is a much more involved system due to the way the story is presented and how the game is played. In some detective games, solving a case can be as easy as clicking around on everything and following a clear path. This, however, is not how the Oberdin is played. Instead of dawdling around the ship from one body to the next to solve each death individually, each death is based on a web of others from a section of the journey, so the player must find the context of each death as well. To add on to this, detective type games, most of the time, will show you both who died and how they died. In the Oberdin, meanwhile, not only is it key to find out who killed each person and in what ways, the player must also find out who died in the first place. Though this may not seem difficult, just remember that there are 60 fates to solve, and with the way that the story is laid out, there is very little dialogue to gather names from. These core mechanics of the gameplay in Oberdin really allow for a true detective experience, where the player isn't fed the answers, but actively has to seek them out, from looking at the clothes of the person, to their accent, where they hang out, and who they interact with. And if you think you can guess your way through each fate, that won't quite do in the Oberdin, as unlike other games, the player must solve three fates correctly to be told if they've done it right which can be frustrating at times when not knowing anyone's names, but is all the more rewarding when this screen pops up. In conclusion, the gameplay is way more in-depth than any other detective game I've played, and as such, The Return of the Oberdin was way more satisfying to complete. This, with the way the story is told, really made me realize that The Return of the Oberdin is truly a great game. <laughs>